Hey guys, it's Leon, and I have been invited to shoot a wedding slash wedding portrait in Sanya. So yesterday I hopped on a four hour flight and got here. I have a day to location scout, and today I am shooting the actual wedding, which I'm really excited for, but I'm also really nervous because weddings aren't hard to shoot. The photography is the easy part, but making sure things go well and making sure that things don't fail and having a backup plan of everything, that's the most difficult part for me. So in this Pelican case, this is all the camera gear that I brought for this trip. Okay, this is the first piece of gear. It's a plastic bag and a raincoat. This is super important. Last week, we went to Xinhuangdao for a trip and turns out, even though the weather forecast says there's gonna be no rain, we ended up in the middle of two downpours. We got soaked. In that situation, if I was shooting a wedding, I would have lost my job. <laughs> because even though these cameras are weatherproof, they're not waterproof, so water can still get in. In that case, plastic bag. This is the oldest trick in the book. You can put your camera inside the plastic bag and you can shoot like this. Having a plastic bag to travel with is just, in general, a good idea. Obviously, I can't use umbrellas when I'm shooting, so this is very important. Next up, as you might have already seen, the camera bodies. The main shooter for this wedding is gonna be the Canon R5, which is here. Although this is a great camera, there's no guarantee that it's gonna work 100% of the time. So there has to be a backup plan in case the R5 fails. In that case, I have borrowed Cathy's A7R 3 You might even argue that this is even better for wedding than the R5, but I'm using this as my backup body. On here, I've got the Metabones adapter, and this is just making sure that all of my lenses for the R5 works for the Sony. Cathy has also borrowed me her favorite lens, which is the 24 to 70 G Master. This is to make sure that uh, just in case something fails, or just in case if I wanna use the Sony, I have one native lens to fall back to. Uh, I specifically chose the R5 and the A7S 3 because they have dual card slots because by writing all of my data to two cards just in case if one card fails i still have all of my pictures in the other card and moving on to lenses you've already seen the 24 to 70 g master but i also have the canon ef 24 to 70. this is my favorite lens me and kathy were all big fans of the 24 to 70 but this is a workhorse but i won't be using this too much because uh, if i want to use the 24 to 70 i can switch between the bodies so i can have the 24 to 70 on sony and then have like a 50 or 135 on the Canon. And now I'll just be switching bodies instead of switching lenses. Okay, the next lens is the 135. This is a phenomenal lens because it's pretty much the same thing as the 70 to 200, except that it's smaller, lighter, can fly on gimbals, which I won't do. But if you have not watched my review of this lens, click here. This is one of my favorite lenses. And it's the only lens in this entire arsenal that has gotten compliment from a client. The next lens, of course, is the 50, because you gotta have a 50, right? <laughs> when shooting weddings, uh, most people choose the 35 and the 85. None of them I own, so I brought the 50. And the last lens, of course, is the 70-200. This lens is a must-have if you're shooting anything that's related to events or sports or anything that you just can't get close. So the compression and the image quality of this lens is phenomenal. Every time that I get to use this lens, I just feel so stress-free because this lens can make anything look good. Uh, however, it is a pain in the ass to carry, which is like the one downside for this lens. And you might have noticed that even though I'm shooting on the R5, I'm not using any of the RF lenses. That's because at this moment when I'm studying film, all of the cinema cameras are using EF glass. Because later down the road, if I want to rent a Blackmagic pocket cinema camera 6K, or if I want to rent a C200, all of my lenses are completely compatible, which is why I'm sticking on EF glass for now. Okay, next up is the flashes. I have a kit of three flashes and they're all made by Godox or Godox, not sure how to pronounce it, but this is the V860 Mark II and these are the V350. I really like these flashes because they all run on lithium ion batteries, which are so great because traditionally flashes use four AA batteries. That's a pain in the ass. You have to find four and make sure they're all on the same battery level. It's just a mess. I have two small flashes. These are mainly for like pops in the background. And this big flash, this is what I use the most, which is why it's like pretty much broken now. This flash fell off a light stand the other day and it broke off the hot shoe port, which means I can't use this flash on camera. Um, not ideal, but oh well, I can still trigger this flash remotely. Also, before I switched to the R5, I was on the A7R2 and which means I was on a Sony system when I bought these flashes, which means all of these flashes are Sony compatible, not Canon compatible. So I can't run these flashes on top of my camera, uh, only on the Sony, which is another reason that I brought the a7 III. Also, since I bought flashes, I gotta bring triggers. 
This is the one thing that I always forget. I'd be like, well, I have a camera and I have a flash. That's great. And then I forgot the trigger and then the flash can't talk to the camera. The camera can't talk to the flash and it just ruins the entire shoot. So always remember to bring triggers. And as you can see, I have two, one for Sony and one for Canon. So I can trigger all of my flashes on all of my cameras. All of these flashes, even though they are made for Sony, even the Canon flash can talk to the Sony flash, which is great which is another reason that I don't buy first party flashes, not only because they're expensive, but also because if you switch systems, you have to sell all of your flashes, which I have done before. Realistically, it's just not feasible to travel with a light stand, an umbrella, this entire suitcase, my backpack, my sling bag, uh, that's too much. But I can fit a bit of little accessories in here. So this is a mount that can go on your flash, like so. And then you can put all of your accessories on here as magnets. So this is a wide angle adapter and it just snaps on. And then, you know, you got a wide angle adapter. You also have honeycombs to focus your light, also snaps on. This one is used to hold your filters, snaps on. This one is a barn door and it also just snaps on. You also get a light bulb. I really like this one because it's so even and so soft. You got a light bulb and you got a snoot. This is also used to focus your light. You also get some color gels and you can buy more the color gel pack. And you can also stick that in here with magnets. This is a godsend. I used to tape everything on with gaff tape and it just got really messy and it's a pain in the ass. I'm really glad that I moved on to this system and I won't be switching away from here anytime soon. I also got two double A's packed in here because uh, the flash triggers, they do run on double A's. So I, I just have it in here as a backup. And speaking of gaff tape, Gaff tape. You gotta go on set with gaff tapes. This thing has saved my ass so many times. There are times that it's just not even related to camera gear. Like for example, clients' decorations are falling off the wall and they need to tape it somewhere. You can just be like, hey, I have gaff tape. Do you want to use it? Sometimes it's not even your problem to fix, but you can fix any problems on set, mostly with gaff tape. Lastly, some little accessories. Go on set with a rocket blower. I'm going to be shooting on the sand. Interesting fact is, even though all of these cameras, I feel comfortable shooting them under rain, I am not comfortable shooting them anywhere near sand because sand gets in everywhere. Uh, last time I brought my camera to the beach and I returned with all the dials having sand stuck in them and it was just a disgusting pain in the ass. I spent half a year cleaning out all the sand in my camera. Also, the Aperture MX. This light is phenomenal. Um, you can have the client hold it like this and be like, oh. uh, lighting always adds a little pop to your scene. Uh, one thing that I really like about the MX, not only that it's really bright and it's bicolor, is that the tungsten range goes all the way to 2700K. Usually tungsten lights only go to 3200K. 2700K is a really distinct look. And lastly, lens wipes. Um, they look like condoms, honestly, but uh, these are the best lens wipes. It's the Zeiss lens wipe. You gotta have lens wipes. I don't know what to say. So let's close this. And in addition to this bag, I also have my Peak Design 30 liter backpack that's used to house all of my clothes and charger and computer for backup. That's the boring stuff. So it's the standard deal for all trips. And I also brought a sling bag strapped to my 30 liter backpack. That's really important because uh, when you're on set, you're switching lenses, it's really nice to have a sling bag. It just gives you a little like workstation that you can carry with you uh, to switch lenses and to switch camera bodies instead of every time you need to take off your backpack to switch lenses. Again, this camera is the Canon R5, which is my primary shooter on the 16 to 35, which I didn't talk about, but I won't be using it too much. And also I brought the Peak Design Travel Tripod. That's all the stuff I brought to this trip. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you have, like, subscribe, and comment down below what is the one thing that you guys can't live without in your camera bag. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye.